As we move into the second week of this Russian invasion of Ukraine, there are three things you're probably going to be hearing about this upcoming week. One, fighter jets from NATO possibly being handed over to Ukraine. Now, I told you in this video on Friday, NATO, as of right now, has ruled out enforcing a no-fly zone. So instead, Ukraine's president has asked for planes for his own pilots to use to try and enforce one. The United States has said we will work with our NATO partner, Poland, that also borders Ukraine, to try and make this happen. Now, the proposed plan would be Poland gives its jets to Ukraine, while the United States then backfills our planes into Poland so they can protect themselves if they need to. There are obviously a lot of logistical problems with that plan, namely the Ukrainian airfields where the planes would land and take off have been either destroyed or are currently being attacked, not to mention the personnel that's needed to maintain those planes. Second, a possible United States ban on Russian oil imports. Now, I told you in this video last week, Russian oil only makes up a small relative percentage of our import, but with the current price of a barrel of crude so high, many politicians and Americans see it as a source of funding the United States is giving to Russia. Now, President Biden has been hesitant to cut off Russian oil because we'd likely have to do that in connection with our European partners who rely a lot more on Russia for their energy and oil than we do. And if the West and the EU cut it off as a sanction, that will definitely drive down the global available supply and absolutely increase the price worldwide. 2A, we're also going to be hearing a lot from Congress about that proposed $10 billion the president is asking for for Ukrainian aid and for the United States Defense Department. And third, the Russian and Ukrainian delegations will meet again tomorrow to try and come up with some resolution. At the very least, they're expected to discuss ensuring those human corridors that I discussed in this video are safe for civilians to try and exit the country. So far, they haven't all been so safe.